Hello again. In this tutorial we're going to cover something that most people want to have a go at at some point or another and that's a mosaic. Now our subject on this one is going to be the moon and to be honest it's the subject that most people assume if you mention mosaic they just instantly think moon mosaic. Um, but if you've got a camera that's only got a fairly small field of view such as a webcam you can use the same method for doing something such as say the Pleiades um, or if you've got long exposure modification then you know one of the star clusters uh, the open clusters and then if you really want to sort of push the envelope then there's no reason why you couldn't have a go at doing um, sort of a, a, an Andromeda galaxy you know a, a long exposure webcam mosaic of the Andromeda galaxy um, you know the possibilities are endless but like I said in this case we're going to cover the moon and um, we're going to give you some tips and tricks to hopefully get you well on your way to, to get, being successful at it um, now as they like to say on the television, here's one I made earlier, um, which I'm going to point out a couple of examples with. Um, but something to bear in mind first of all before you start, is that you've, you've got to remember that the moon is constantly moving. And as a result the shadows are also constantly moving. Uh, you know, it might only be very subtle, but it's moving all the time. And as a result some of the features can start to look different as well. So it's very, very important that you sort of build up a method and a fluidity to, to working through it. You've got to be fairly quick and if you're not it can result in um, sort of little anomalies and stuff within your image where, where your two sections are, are stitched together you know because the, the lights change. Now in, in this example uh, you might be able to see that there's a step just here and what that is it's a panel that's, that's not quite uh, in with the rest. The reason being that I, when I took this one uh, I've left a little tiny section out of my moon and I had to do sort of this section again at the end of it all and as a result of me it being so long between me doing all the rest of the moon and then coming back to this one uh, everything's changed just that slight amount and it's confused the stitching software a little bit so it's just something to be aware of that you know speed is important and you'll be lucky if you get one just right the first time you know it might take a few goes to just build up your, your, your rhythm and your, and your fluidity um, now before you even start uh, there's a few things that you, you need to do to sort of prepare uh, and, and get ready before you even start imaging. Now the first one is with regards to your exposure and your gain on your camera. What you need to be doing is you need to move over to the very brightest part of the moon first of all. And get yourself focused up. Uh, focus up on that bright section. And like I said, spend a lot of time on that focus. It makes sure you're focusing spot on. Now once you've done that, once you've got focusing on one section, then you can you can tighten your focusing up and you can lock it because you're not going to need to touch it again then throughout the rest of your mosaic. Um, so while we're still on this bright section, what you need to do next is you need to alter your gain and your exposure on your webcam. And you need to do that, like I say, on the very brightest section of the moon. Uh, the reason for that is, um, if, you, if you went over to a dark section, and you set your gain and exposure over here by the time you move on to this bright section this is just going to be bleached and washed out and, and have no detail in it so what we do is we, we set up the gain and exposure on the brightest section uh, leave them alone then for the rest of your mosaic you don't touch them again and that's what gives you your overall light balance of, of your full image of your, of your moon so just a couple of things there to think about first so now we should be focused and we should have our gain and, and exposure sorted out and we're about ready to start. Um, now I'm going to show you a tip in a couple of minutes that um, was shown to me by another amateur astronomer called John Koros and it just helps you to make sure that you've got every panel uh, exactly right and you've got all your bits in and you've not missed any parts out and, and, and it, it's just a method for, for working your way around doing your mosaic. Now what I would recommend is when you first start is to start on the terminator because this is where the light's changing the most um, which you know as we said before about the shadows changing and, and the features changing appearance so it might be better for you to work down the terminator and, and then start to work out in whichever direction is the most comfortable for you so in a minute we're going to come back again and I'll show you the tip uh, that was shown by John Koros which like I said is, a, is an absolutely brilliant tip and that's where we're going to go next Okay, we've got uh, another window open now, uh, which I'm going to explain in a, in a moment. Um, but 
what you should have on on your own desktop is just to have your imaging software open, um, like you know SharpCap. I use SharpCap, um, and you need to have selected a folder to save your AVIs to, and you need to have that folder open. Um, you know you can have it reduced on your onto your taskbar, but make sure you've got that folder open, um, and then you should also have iMerge running. Uh, and again, you can have it reduced for the time being onto your taskbar. Um, and I'll explain why in a moment. This is the method that was that was demonstrated by John Koros, and it is a brilliant method for, for keeping track of whereabouts you are with your mosaic. Um, this is basically how, how the system works. Um, as you take each each image, each AVI, and it's, it, it loads into, into the folder that you've selected, um, drag each AVI into the iMerge window, like so, and you'll see the first frame of your AVI. Don't worry about the quality of anything, this is not how your mosaic's going to come out, it's just a single frame from your AVI, it's not been processed or anything yet. Uh, but this is going to help us to keep track of exactly where we're going and where we've been um, with our mosaic. And as, you, as you've taken your second AVI and your second one's finished and loaded into your folder, drag that one in and as you can see it's now gone transparent the two sections and it allows you to overlap one onto the other one like so and if you keep working like this and um, next you get your third one pull your third one in and again use it to overlap like so it gives you a good idea now you can see where you've been and where you need to go with regards to making your mosaic and, and making sure that you're not missing any bits uh, and you want to be aiming at an overlap of about a third really with uh, with your panels and like I said just, just work through until you've built up a complete moon um, and once like I said with this speed again you'll find once you've built a rhythm up that whilst an AVI is taking you'll be dragging that the AVI that you've just taken into the iMerge window so that everything's working all the time you know flick the flick the, the storage folder up and flick iMerge up and drag one in while one's still taking uh, you know just make that whole the whole routine sort of as fluid as you possibly can it'll come with a little bit of practice you know I mean you'll, you'll cock up first of all everybody does but um, you know it'll come and eventually you'll get something that you're really pleased with now, once you've got all your pictures together and you've got a mosaic, and maybe you have made a mess of it, you know, maybe not, but you'll always get something out of it. Uh, for instance, if, you know, this part of our image we've got, and I don't know, maybe we've been too slow or just things haven't gone as, as expected, then there's no reason why you can't crop, say, this section and just do, you know, uh, an overall image of, I don't know, around Tycho maybe. You could just, you know, you can you, you can use a section of your mosaic just because a little bit of it might be messed up. Doesn't mean that you've lost the whole lot. You know, you can get a really good image just from a couple of panels as well. Um, you know, you could do close-ups of certain craters or just just areas or seas, mers. Um, you'll always get something out of it. Don't ever think that if you've made a slight mistake that you know you've screwed the whole thing up because you haven't. Um, you'll always get something out of it, and and as well as that, you've, you'll you'll learn something. And eventually, you know, you'll you'll be getting where you'll be doing these really easy. All your movements will be fluid, and you'll just be able to do it, you know, like standing on your head. So next, we're going to go into the process inside, and again, I'm going to show you a little trick. Um, so we're back in a moment, and um, after we've loaded Reggie stacks up. Right, we've already done a Reggie stacks tutorial before, uh, so I'm not going to run over everything again. Um, Basically, at this point now, we've done the align and we've done the stack um, as talked about in the previous tutorial. Um, we're at the section now where the wavelets are. Um, so what you want to be doing is you should have loaded in your lightest panel again. Um, the reason being that you're going to use the same settings for every one of your panels. And in Registax, if you have a process, it tends to show up more on lighter sections than it does on darker ones. So if you process your lightest sections first, then you know that you're not going to over process on, on your darker bits. So what we do is we've got our image here now loaded in and we want to be sort of messing with the wavelets and getting the best image quality that we can do. So I'm just going to dash through these um, for the sake of time. Once you've got it that you're happy with, you know, you're nice and sharp, you've got your features in and everything, you'll see here there's a button that says save scheme. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to click save scheme and you'll get a fresh window opens. Just give it a name here, you know, Moon Mosaic or, or such like and click on save. Now I've saved one previously called Moon Mozzie. Um, so I'm not going to save another one. And what you're going to do now is you're going to use the, these same settings for every one of your panels. Um, so once you've processed this one, you've done your save scheme, load your next section in. And when you get to the wavelets part, you just click on load scheme and click on your, your whatever it is that you've saved it as, your scheme, click open. And it'll move those sliders, it'll set everything up to exactly how your previous one was. And what you want to be doing is obviously using those same settings then through every one of your panels and um, using the save scheme and load scheme method then you know you're just going to use the same settings for every single one of your panels it just keeps everything uniform so now we've got our AVIs have been taken and they've all been processed and the next part is obviously going to stitch them together so that's where we're going to go to next Okay, introducing you to another piece of software. This is a piece of software called Microsoft Ice. Again, it's free. Um, so just, you know, do a Google for Microsoft Ice and, and download it. Um, now, obviously you've got a folder somewhere with your, with your moon images in that have all been processed. So the first thing you want to do is click on File and click on New and just find your folder with your, with your moon images in it, like so. Now obviously you would select all of those by clicking first here and then holding shift and clicking the last one. Uh, I'm just going to do about three or four of mine to, to just make things faster. So if we open those four images, you can see that it's just it's just having a look at them and processing and, and compositing them and it, it's, it's actually stitching them together. So after a few seconds, what you should get is that. So once you've got this, um, you can treat this, this bottom section a little bit like uh, your kind of graphics package, you know, you can crop it um, and you, you choose what format it is that you want to export it into, which 9 times out of 10 is probably going to be a PNG. I use PNG nearly all the time. Um, once you've got all your images together and you're quite happy, I mean, it, it auto-stitches quite well Microsoft Ice, as you can see. It, it's built up, a, you know, quite a nice image there. Um, so all you do is pick what format you want to output it to and click on export to disk and that will give you save options of what you want to name it and where you want to name it as, as, as normal. Um, once you've got that and, it, and it's put your panorama together, you've now got your, your, your mosaic if you like of your moon, you might want to load it into say uh, Photoshop or whatever graphics package you use and just do a little bit more tweaking, you know, tweak the contrast a little bit, uh, maybe the curves. Um, and the contrast and stuff just to just to add that little bit bit more to it and that's basically it uh, so I hope you've learned something from this and um, you know it's helped you and I look forward to seeing some of your mosaics appearing on the site uh, so once again uh, thanks for watching and that's all for now